when I was in high school, I went to a boarding school and they, it was in the 80s when everybody's a little bit hippy dippy. And uh, they let me have a senior project of learning how to be a folk singer. And I got to go to bars and I had a guitar teacher and he said, we're, we're gonna write songs. So this is a song that I wrote for my senior recital in high school, part of it. And then I put it away for 18 years because it really wasn't quite what this song is now. But the, 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 the generous, you know, the, the seed of it definitely was that. And over the years as I performed it, I wanted to get people to have a feeling of what George felt like when he showed up. So here's how it starts. I'd like you to imagine that on stage is a grand piano. Seated at it is a man in a gray suit with a red tie. He's playing 76 trombones, lead the big parade. And his grandchildren are marching around the room. It's Thanksgiving. When my grandmother leaves the room, he will sing you dirty verses to songs he learned in college. Get out your old rubber bustle. Get out and hustle, cause the rent is coming due. While you're out there making money, I'll be waiting for you, honey. If you can't get five, take two. Well, my grandfather used to play 76 trombones. And Miss Otis regrets on a piano, on a down on a flatbread truck, all the way down Main Street with the color guard and the vets. And my grandmother saved the picture that they ran in the paper, George and his ivories in the lead. 76 trombones lead the big parade. George and his 88 keys. And Miss Otis regrets that George will be unable to lunch today Cause he's down the hall in his room With some childhood tune That will not get out of his way And there's a bird on the windowsill Or is that his old backyard And the sparrow that once sat on his palm Seventy-six trombones lead the big parade In George's head, now they all play different songs And she wore a tulip, a big yellow tulip And he wore a big red rose And George wears what the nurse dresses him in now he can't understand his clothes And my grandmother comes to help him Eat his lunch every day And sits with him through the long afternoon Seventy-six trombones lead the big parade And love does not forget its tune your sweet sound let it come and abide with me in the gathering dark we'll play a song in f sharp george taught himself on just the black keys and we'll play it by ear to call heaven near where not one note has to sound alone 76 trombones be the big parade and George all the way home
Cozy, mm -hmm. you are better than anybody I know at using humor uh, in in your songs, mm -hmm. and and it's it's always been interesting to me because um, I remember as a when I first started writing, and I remember, I've watched this in others. We all it seems like so many of us we start out we want to we want to write love songs or we want to write you know, about angst, or we want to write these serious songs, and we eschew the notion of humor because somehow that just seems less serious. <coughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> and, but what I know, and, and your songs have taught me that as much as anybody, um, is that, one, it isn't easy. Uh, and, and, and two, it can be so effective uh, as a means of communication. Talk a little bit about how you do that. Well, I first want to say also, my family valued humor. They valued Tom Lear. Tom Lear was a big hit in our family, and he came to our house. My family, it was in New Hampshire, where if you are in, in the politics, you know, they come to your house, and uh, they had a fundraiser, and Tom Lear came and played our piano, and he played, and I was six years old, and I sat there, and people laughed, and, you know, I could feel the energy in the room, so I was like, I'm going to be able to do this. Uh, but yes, songwriting that people ask, how do you, how do you teach it? And I, I've never even thought of thinking I could teach, how, teach you how, 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 how humor works. For me, the funny songs are the gift from the gods. The idea or the line that shows up, utterly a gift. I, I was on a hike once and um, I was trying to find a, I found, I found a rhyme that was um, f for the word menopausal, and I was dying to use the rhyme for the word menopausal. <laughs> and I came up with a line, and I built an entire song around the fact that the menopausal line, what rhyme was in it. Um, so, and the songs that have, that have done that, and I haven't written one in a number of years, they've often usually come out of a, 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 actually a lot of frustration and pain, something ho horrible, and I've had, somehow I've come up with a way to laugh at it. I mean, that's the other gift. Helps you laugh at this thing where you're thinking, you know, you can't laugh at it, so. Well, and you do it, I mean, it, it, you do it not only in, yeah, you write songs that have people rolling in the aisle, but you also use humor even in a serious song. Uh, and humor and irony, you know, right. in, in, even in a serious song. And I, I, so I think, you, 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 I think that's, that's something you do, is, again, very, very well. I, I, and I was actually warned about it early in my career to stop doing that. <laughs> um, that, you know, if I would stop playing those songs that, you know, I would do better because people wanted sort of a one, they wanted to know what they were getting from you, you know, that you were like this musician who did that. And I was never that musician because I would be bored myself sitting through that show, so I would go here and here and here. And this woman sat me down, she said, you do so much better if you would just... Uh, but I, I, I personally like to laugh. It's, it's just that I like to do it, so I, you know, I'm drawn to it. Well, play us a funny song. And, and that, by the way, With right that, there. No pressure. <laughs> Now, you go anywhere from Waldo to Welcome to Boston. I love it when people also, they introduce me, I say, please, they say, what would you like to do? I say, say anything except that I'm funny. Don't do that. Just, you know, you say that you don't, because it, 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 it's, that's like, when people want to write a song, they say, I, they say, I have this humorous line and I'm going to write a song. Tell and me I a say, joke. Yeah. And I say, right there, you're dead. Do you think you have a humorous line? You know, right there, the word humorous means you don't actually know if something's funny. Humorous isn't a funny word. Funny is a funny word, you know. I don't see well, it has to be a good situation that sets it up. Uh, this was uh, my house sitter left her nose ring on the back of the toilet when she moved out one year. And right there, I mean. Uh, uh, and uh, it was at a time that I was thinking of getting something pierced because I was in my late 20s, I think, or maybe my late 30s. I was going to come on one of those birthdays where you're thinking, do I pierce myself this time? And I really was, you know, considering about this. And this house sitter, she was just beautiful. And so if she put an earring anywhere in her body, it looked fabulous. And if she tattooed something on her body, it looked fabulous. And uh, I uh, was a musician sitting in a car all the time. You know, I didn't have her navel. It wasn't going to happen, no matter what I did. So. so I decided that, you know, I would write this song and see if anybody else... And that's the other thing about humor. I, d I wrote a song about a yeast infection, because I got a $100 speeding ticket on the way to the gynecologist. And, and I, so I write this song. And, I, and for about 20 years, I never had another yeast infection. I, it's almost like they, say, they, they, they heal you. They heal you. So I still have never been pierced, but here's. Some people look sexy and fierce when they are multiply pierced. I must be getting too old. All I can think is how would 